Let's call the meeting to order. This meeting is being recorded. I would ask if there's anyone else recording this meeting. Seeing none, if you'd please join me in the Pledge of Allegiance. I pledge, pledge of allegiance to the flag of the United States, States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. I don't see any citizens to comment, so we will move right on to special recognitions. Dr. Hanfield. Thank you, uh, Mr. Chair, and good evening, everyone. Uh, yes, I'd like to start tonight with a special recognition. Um, I, I had the pleasure of being invited to the Swanson uh, Intermediate School <laughs> Turkey Trot. It was my first experience, and um, it was um, uh, an activity uh, for the whole school. And it was uh, in celebration of the fact that the Swanson Road Intermediate School raised over ten thousand dollars, ten thousand wow. dollars, under the direction of physical education teacher Ann Shane as part of Swiss's commitment to the Pride and Purpose program. This program has been a long-running partnership between Swiss and the Nitzveni uh, School in Dumfries, South Africa, um, which is a K to seven school. And um, we've gone over, we've sent uh, staff over, uh, Dr. Lopez, um, Mrs. Shane, and others have gone um, to um, Nitzveni. And they were hoping to bring uh, some of their staff over this year, but um, with the, uh, the new variant that's now upon us, um, not sure that that's going to happen. The original plan was to try to bring them over the week before April vacation. Um, but we're not sure with everything going on that that's going to be able to, uh, to take place. But, um, a huge kudos um, to the kids um, and staff. Ten thousand dollars, far and away, is is the most amount of money that they've ever raised for something like this. So, um, just a, really something to be proud of, and, and congratulations to, you know, to Mrs. Shane, and and just applaud the commitment that that Swiss has to working with their sister school in, in Dumfries. So, just wanted to bring that to people's attention. And if I might add, the newspaper said that. Dr. Lopez dressed as a turkey. Yeah, so that would every be a yeah, to see. <laughs> yeah, so every year, um, as I understand it, um, so, uh, one of the lucky staff members uh, gets to don the turkey uh, outfit and do the turkey trot. And this year it was <laughs> Dr. Lopez's turn. And having been there for uh, having been there for a couple of this, the uh, the assemblies, it was it was quite the scene. It was really fun to watch the kids. The kids get yeah. so excited. Um, <laughs> It's so excited, so it was it was great. It was a it was a nice way to lead into the Thanksgiving holiday. Now, if we wanted you to put the Rocket Man costume back on again, oh, for I was, next okay. I was going to say that? back on. I was I thought originally I thought you were going to say on, and I was going to say well, I've already had it on. <laughs> well, I know you have, and that's why I'm asking. Would I have to put that in the form of a motion for um, next Thanksgiving? Or? No, I don't sure. think so. I. Uh, do you know how difficult it was to get that on? <laughs> and then it, it was it was so gross after I took it off from previous wearings. I don't, ever been, I don't think it had ever been cleaned. So we sent it to Dooley's and I asked him to, to you know to, to steam it like ten times. And um, I still think I have the the grit on me, but um, it may have shrunk a little bit too. After could have the process. Could so have. Then he wouldn't have to wear it. He'd have to get somebody else. Yeah, yeah. could have. So um, <laughs> all right, you're off yeah. the hook. Sorry, yeah. I brought it up. But if you'd like me to, to try to don that, I, I I can see what I can do. Let's let's see where you're at next year. As okay. Far as, okay. <laughs> thank as far you. as weight, and then we'll go from there. All right. Thank you very much. So um, I would now entertain a motion to accept the minutes of November 17. I'll make that motion. I'll second it. All in favor? Aye. 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 This is a vote. Do we have student representatives, Dr. Hanfield? Uh, I, Allie, Allie had sent a, a message of apology that she had another commitment this evening. I don't know. Have we, did we hear an answer from Jasmine? No, I did not. Okay. So we, I, we don't know where Jasmine is, but if she pops in, we'll, we'll, okay. we'll put her on. They may be starting an early Christmas break. <laughs> yeah, maybe. Maybe. I, that's I, I, fine. Maybe. I know they, the trimester has just ended over at the high school, so they could be studying, right, for their exams. <laughs> That could be part of it. They have exams tomorrow and Friday, right? Well, no. Today was the last day. Oh, right? today was the last day. Okay. So, so they. Are, so maybe they're they celebrating for tomorrow. A new, whole new schedule. That's true. So maybe they're preparing. Okay, we'll cut them some slack this time. Thank you. They I'm do sure such they're. a great job typically. I now move on to the superintendent's report. Yes, thank you, Mr. Chair. Um, just a COVID update, um, as we do every every meeting. Um, obviously, we had the Thanksgiving holiday. Um, and this week thus far we've reported uh, what's that, 29 cases. Uh, we had 16 on Monday, 
six yesterday, we reported seven today. Obviously the 16 is a number that spans, you know, five and a half days. So um, I always like to qualify um, numbers like that when we come off of a break. We definitely appreciate test and stay as Dr. Chamberlain can attest. We have um, many, many kids, and Dr. McCrellis, you can attest to that as well. We have many, many kids taking part in test and stay mm -hmm. uh, across the district. And um, I, I, can't, I can't imagine where we would be if we were having to send students home um, because we couldn't have them participate in this program. So um, just really appreciative of that. And um, also appreciate people's continued vigilance. Um, obviously, there's a new, new variant that's been identified. Um, and I'm sure we'll be, you know, playing in a theater near us real soon. Yeah. And, um, you know, anything people can do, you know, whether it's, and, and I understand, I, I understand the masking piece, I understand the vaccine, I get all of it, but, um, you know, I, I, anything people can do is appreciated to, to not only keep themselves safe, but, you know, to help us here in the school district, you know, keep, keep, uh, keep things going in as, in as orderly a fashion as possible. I have a question through the chart. Were those cases found through the test and stay program or were the kids already diagnosed before? So we've had some. Uh, we've had a handful of cases come through test and stay um, where we've picked them up. Um, the majority, I would say, right, Dr. Chamberlain, the majority would be. This week, mm -hmm. most were from the weekend. Yeah. Okay. Um, since we started, we've had, I think, seven that have been picked up through test and stay. Yeah. So zip slip is helping immensely then oh, it is yeah yeah the nurses use that yeah. yeah yeah it continues to be um a a, a, a large large weapon in our arsenal mm -hmm. um you know so uh yeah now through the chair if i might ask parents had to agree to the child being part of test and stay is that correct that's correct did any parents not want that um yes they did Yes, we had some parents that, that elected not to participate in the program, um, which unfortunately then puts it back on them if their child should be designated as a close contact. Um, but I, would, I think it's fair to say, though, the majority of our families have, have, have elected to uh, put their child in the program, or children in the program. And the ones that don't, then the child has to go home and stay yeah, in quarantine? It's, and it's, yeah, it's, it's what life was like you know, before. pre having this in our buildings. Yeah. They can provide consent as things come up, right? So, so, they, so they could change their mind. Two weeks ago, and now my child's a close contact, they can provide consent now. So we do take those on a little bit. Oh, good. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, and oftentimes that's what will happen. You know, you'll get a circumstance where you'll have a child um, designated as a close contact. The nurses will look through the paperwork. They don't have a consent for the, you know, for the child. And, um, you know, they'll notify the family, and on the spot the family will consent. Oh, good. Uh, typically, good. And, and we take it that way. So, um, so yeah. Okay. It's been a it's been a very very good very good program for us. Sounds it. Yes. Thank you. Are we having um, good success once again with zip slips as far as participation? Um, About the same as last yeah. year. Yeah. Pretty good. Okay. Yeah, pretty good. Um, yeah. It's really helpful for the nurses to track what's going on at home, as well as uh, for the nurses to track staff issues. Right when somebody's out sick, that kind of thing. So no, it's been very helpful. Yeah, a good response. And what we're seeing in these numbers too, uh, you know, these and, and even ones before them, is we're seeing it's a lot of household situations. So the numbers may look large, but they're not they're not necessarily isolated. Um, they're siblings of siblings of siblings. So which I guess you know would be expected, right? Sure. Um, so so that also is another you know kind of qualifying factor in, in this. Good to know. Okay. Any other questions, comments? Um, yeah, through the chair, how would, um, I know on Zip Slip you can upload your COVID card on there. Is that something all parents in the district can do now? Like K up or? So I'm working with Zip Slip now. When we did it for the middle school and high school, some of the files that got uploaded were hard for me here to open or for the uh, nurses yep. to open. Mm -hmm. So they're just double checking on a fix that they put in for that, and then we'll have the same form. It'll be sent out through ZipSlip okay. to Swanson, um, Bryn Mawr, and Pack, okay. and then you'll see it and be able to upload it. I just don't want to do it till the fix is there so that we yeah. can easily access the card. Right, so you just click and it opens. Yeah, type yeah. Thing. Cool. Thank you. Great. All right. We now move on to 
New business. Yes, thank you, Mr. Chair. Um, in your packets tonight, um, the, the two items from the Southern Worcester County Educational Collaborative. Um, the first is information, and that's the, the first quarter report. Um, and then the second item is the um, Collaborative Annual Report for 2021, which requires um, action on your part to accept the uh, report. And then we send a copy of this to them for their records so that they know that you've seen it. There are uh, 13 member school districts that make up the Southern Worcester County Collaborative, and we are a member district. We pay a agency fee to be part of the um, collaborative. And then obviously if we have uh, students who need their services um, out of district, we also utilize um, them um, on an as-needed basis. So um, it's important that they have um, this information. Okay, I would entertain a motion to accept. I will make a motion to accept the Worcester County Educational uh, First Quarter Report. Do I have a second? A second. Any discussion on that? Uh, through the chair, you may, you, you actually made, you need it on the collaborative annual report for 2021. I apologize. Okay, so we need another motion. Yeah, um, we'll just take, we'll send that motion and make the motion that's on the back part of the page. Make a motion to accept the Southern Worcester County Collaborative Annual Report for 2021. Do I have a second? Second. Any discussion? No. Nope. I would just um, like to ask, how many students do we have at the, the collaborative now? Um, roughly five. Okay. Roughly, I don't have the numbers in front of me, but about five. Okay. We're one of the um, we're one of the lesser, um, I guess, subscribed school districts um, there, um, primarily because we have programs here in the districts like Bright. We have alternative programs at the high school. Um, we have programs in the elementary schools um, in addition to Bright. So we don't we don't send very many kids out if we don't have to. Um, what we're seeing. Uh, and actually, I, I hosted the Southern Worcester County um, Superintendent's Roundtable two weeks ago to talk about these documents, and um, which I'm sure this won't be a surprise, but the dysregulation among students everywhere is, is, is off the charts. And so Southern Worcester County is um, chuck full of, of students, K-12, to um, from other school districts. Many school districts don't have the programming that we have, and so um, they're forced to send those kids out of the district. But um, yeah, we have about five. Yeah, that doesn't seem like a lot for a district of our size. No. And no, it's good to it's good to know that we at least have that to fall back on. Mm -hmm. yeah. But it's always been our mission to keep as many students in district as as we can. Correct. As long as we can, you know, as long as we're able to help them out. Yeah. That's that's always been um, at, at least as, as long as I've been on this committee and this committee has been together. So I, we appreciate that. All in favor? Aye. 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 There's a vote. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Moving on to uh, the budget update. Um, as you know, we have our annual present, or our, I shouldn't say our annual, well, I guess it's our annual, our annual first presentation of the school budget will be um, December the 15th. Um, with the committee's approval, we would like to move that meeting to 6 o'clock in order to accommodate all of the leadership team that night. And then, as we did last year, we would then do the second half, you know, kind of the, the tie up um, and the numbers on January the 5th. Um, and then we would send a draft budget off to the town um, that for that second Monday in January. And we would, I, I'm presuming we would do it in the same fashion that we did it last year. We would have the administrators do it virtually. Yeah, that okay. sounds good. And I, I'm okay with six o'clock. Is everyone else okay with six o'clock? Sure. And will the January fifth also start at six? Or um, I don't think the January fifth will need to be at six. Okay. Um, that will be just a recap, um, a quick recap of what was discussed on the fifteenth. Okay. It will be um, more of a discussion on, like I said, the numbers. So it'll be the offsets. It'll be the projected, you know, numbers from the town. It will be, you know, more of a revenue discussion. It'll be a discussion about projected enrollments, things like you know, things like that. So I, I don't think it needs to be anything um, at six. But I mean, it's up to the committee. I, you know, if you want to meet at six, we can meet at six. It's fine. No, no. Excuse me. No, I don't care. I'll do whatever. Either way, I'm fine. I may have a conflict that 
evening anyway, so I, I'll keep my... Keep it at 6.30, just in case, or...? Um, no, I may not be able to... Oh, attend? ...to make it at all, but... Okay. Well, we can, you know what? We can talk about it on the 15th. How's that? Okay. We can, okay. We can determine what the time. That might be better. It's, that's still a ways away. Yeah, well, I'm sorry, what was the date of that one? January 5th. Okay. So that would be our next, uh, that would be our next scheduled meeting after the holiday. After the 15th. Yeah. Okay, great. Thank Moving you. On. Appreciate that. Um, <coughs> holiday tree lighting. Um, you have been cordially invited by Town Manager Jacobson to attend this year's tree lighting on Friday, uh, this coming Friday, December the 3rd. Um, I believe it begins at 6 o'clock and it will be uh, at the fire station, um, as it always is. So you're more than welcome um, and on behalf of the town administration to attend. Thank you. <coughs> and that's all I have, Mr. Chair. All right. Any questions, comments? All right, we now move on to teaching and learning. Dr. Chamberlain. Good evening, everyone. Um, happy to talk about something other than COVID, which is great. <laughs> um, and Dr. Hanfield and I have both been out in schools over the last couple of weeks, and you would just be so pleased and proud to see what's happening in our classrooms, whether it's a discussion about Alexander Hamilton, you know, solving um, algebraic equations and plotting points on a graph. Um, our youngest kids back in guided reading groups, which is something that, you know, they get a lot out of. There's just a lot of great things happening. Um, so just know that regardless of everything that continues, right, we are pushing forward. And so just to circle back to the universal design of le for learning, the commitment that we've made over the next three years, I've recently gotten a lot of great feedback from the teachers who have been selected to be coaches in each of the buildings. Being a coach means that each month they're getting a full day of training with Universal Design for Learning. And through that training, they're applying that in their own classroom. And now through their principals and their faculty meetings, they'll be talking about that. Not in a big formal presentation kind of way, but to say, this is what I learned this past month, this is what I'm doing, maybe you should try it, right? Or to just kind of get the information out there. So through this program, the teachers will also come starting in January, be able to use some of the time with a little bit of additional work to get a graduate level course, credit for a graduate level course through this. So it's been a great benefit for the district and I'm excited to see where it's gonna lead us. The equity audit with CLE is moving right along. The first meeting with the stakeholders begin of a review of a lot of our MCAS data, performance data, discipline data, that kind of thing. It moved on then this last meeting where we looked at a survey that all staff in the district were able to complete about how they feel, things like how much information do they know about how students overall are performing? Uh, how do they see themselves as leaders in the district? And this is everybody, right? Because we look at everybody to take on their role as a leader. Um, how do they feel they're supported through professional development? A wide variety of questions. So we went through that data this past time. We're going to meet in another week or so, and we're going to um, go through the data collected through focus group uh, interviews that took place. So CLE staff met with students from Auburn High School, Auburn Middle School, staff from across the district, as well as some families from across the district, trying to get a sense of the perceptions of these groups and how we were approaching all students to ensure that we were providing an equitable learning experience for everyone. So it's been kind of exciting to see the develop all the all the nooks and crannies and places where they're looking for information and how they're going to pull this all together. So we're very excited about where this is going to lead for us as far as really improving the district in a comprehensive way that meets the needs for all kids. So while we continue with COVID and trudging through that, there are some really exciting things happening. So I thank you for your support for these initiatives and uh, I look forward to sharing out some of the outcomes of these. Well, thank you. Great, thank you. Thank you. And we now move on to business and financial. Yes, Mr. Chair, thank you. Um, I, I am standing here in place of, or sitting here rather, in place of Mrs. Wisbicki. She's at the town hall budget kickoff this evening representing the public schools. Well, I'd like to thank her, and I'm sorry for the lack of a buildup. <laughs> That's okay. That's all right. She would be disappointed if she thought it wasn't only for her, so 
Um, in any event, uh, just one quick thing that she had asked me to bring to your attention, um, the, new the acceptance of a new scholarship. During the 2019-2020 uh, school year, Donna Heidemann and her enterprise support class took in small used furniture donations and refinished the pieces for sale. The proceeds were to be used for a field trip that was planned but canceled due to COVID. The course no longer exists. And Donna would like to use the $330 to establish a scholarship to benefit students who are in the program and are now graduating and going on to college. So with your um, acceptance, we will get this moving um, into an account and get this out to a worthy student or two. I would entertain that motion. I'll make a motion to accept the amount of $330 for a scholarship to be awarded to a senior evolved student at graduation. Uh, money raised by Donna Heidemann in a former enterprise class. Do I have a second? A second. Any discussion on that? That sounds great. Yeah, I think that's a great idea. All in favor? Aye. Aye. It was a vote. I would now um, entertain a motion to go into executive session. I'll make that motion to, to adjourn into executive session to discuss litigation and bargaining that could be compromised if discussed in open session, according to Mass General Law, number, 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 I don't know. <laughs> There's no general R anymore, that's okay. Okay. We're good. Do I have a second? No second. Roll call vote. Dr. McCrillis? Yes. Ms. Holloway? Yes. Ms. Harrington? Yes. Mr. Scobie? Yes. It is a vote. <laughs>